welcome to the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society. Welcome to ITSP Magazine. You're listening to a new The Hacker Factory podcast with hacker maker, Philip Wiley. You're about to discover what the role of a professional hacker entails, the different specializations it holds, and what it takes to learn and become one. Enjoy the conversation as Philip and guests unveil the secrets of professional hacking, a mysterious, intriguing, and often misunderstood occupation. Knowledge is power, now more than ever. Hello and welcome to the Hacker Factory Podcast. I'm your host, Philip Wiley. And today I'm happy to have uh, Chris Sutherland Jr. joining me today. Uh, Chris, I met through a former student that they run a Discord server helping others get started in cybersecurity and pen testing. And they're up over 3,000 uh, members. And so I thought it'd be good to have Chris on as a guest today. Welcome to the show, Chris. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate you having me. Oh, you're welcome. And I like people that are, that like to give back to the community, try to help people. So uh, definitely those are the stories that people need to hear and, and get the encouragement and learn new resources that they can use to help them get started. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely think it's all about giving back. Uh, when I was getting in the field, someone helped me like all for free and uh, like led the way and, you know, gave me the resources and told me exactly what I needed to do. So I think it's only fair for me to give back and uh, also it just makes the community a better place when everyone's like positively supporting each other. Yeah. You know, positive attitude is kind of, is, you know, it's kind of infectious. You know, if, if you're in a bad mood and you, you know, yell at someone, it puts them in a bad mood. And then that just kind of has a, you know, kind of a effect, a chain effect. But if you're nice to someone, it also has the same thing. You help people, you encourage the same thing. So you're just kind of putting out in the world what you want to see out there. And that's good, good what you're doing. So uh, why don't you kind of introduce yourself and, and share how you got started? Yeah, so I got started in cybersecurity roughly about two years ago. Before that, I was washing trucks, doing DoorDash, mowing lawns, that kind of thing. Um, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, then my brother-in-law that was already doing cybersecurity related things, uh, working as a pen tester, uh, told me exactly what he did for work. And I thought it was really cool. And then the major thing I loved about it was he was able to, you know, work remotely and hack things for a living. So like, who doesn't think hacking stuff is cool? So I was immediately super interested and he told me like kind of the pathway he took to get into cybersecurity, which involved going to this school called WGU, which is like an online uh, university. And I ended up going there and getting my bachelor's and my master's degree. Um, and it came with a whole bunch of certificates from like CompTIA and ISC squared and stuff like that. And uh, so I ended up getting or I ended up finishing my bachelor's and master's within eight months uh, through their like online like self-paced program. Um, and yeah, I actually started working in cyber as a cybersecurity engineer two months after starting school without a degree because I had the A plus, the network plus, and the security plus certificates through the school. And uh, I was just mass applying to jobs. I think I probably put in like, no kidding, like probably a thousand applications like every day I'd spend a couple hours applying like I wasn't gonna let anything stop me I knew exactly what I wanted to do for a living I was studying it and working really hard and uh, that's kind of my introduction to or how I got into cyber and then you know after about eight months at that job I got an offer to be basically a junior pen tester um, because they saw how fast and crazy I was about learning these things and how uh, like motivated I was to change my life. So they took me knowing that I knew nothing about pen testing and started training me, paid for me to take my OSCP and all of that kind of stuff. So um, that's kind of how I got into pen testing. And then, yeah, I've been pen testing ever since. Uh, great story and congrats on your success. That's, that's great to be able to get in as quick as you did and to be able to get into pen testing. Cause I know a lot of people, you know, get in and sometimes they don't get into pen testing right away, but I like the fact that you were submitting all those applications because that's one of the things people don't do. Sometimes they'll submit 
20 applications, they don't hear anything and, you know, they get discouraged and, you know, it's just like sales. If you're trying to sell something, it's just like people that do the mass marketing. They don't just send out a few, you know, emails or whatever they're sending out exactly. you know, hundreds or thousands. Yep. Yep. The more, the more attempts you take, the better. So that's, that's good advice. Good to hear that. It's interesting to hear the difference between your paths and, and Richard, because, you know, you're, you've got certifications, degrees, and he's just kind of still, you know, finishing up like degrees and stuff and working on those things. So it's kind of interesting to see the differences. And I think it's important to share with people that there's more than one way of doing things because one way may not work for others. And so based on your experience, after you've been through it and after you've helped all these people through your community, uh, what would you recommend to someone if they're wanting to get a job as a penetration tester or work in cybersecurity? What would be your recommendations? Um, honestly, the recommendation I would do, I the way I did it, I think is honestly a pretty good way for anyone. I think the best way, honestly, is to just start getting certificates, possibly even enrolling into the college that I went into because it's like the cheapest college and most bang for your buck I could think of. And uh, just start mass applying to any cybersecurity role is my personal opinion. And then once you get your foot in cybersecurity in the industry, then you should start trying to pivot into pen testing because it's a lot easier coming from another cybersecurity role from, from my experience um, into pen testing than it is to just break into pen testing without any cybersecurity background whatsoever. So um, that's what I would kind of recommend for someone that's not in the field whatsoever. And then if you are already in the field and you want to pivot to cybersecurity, I think, I mean, pivot to pen testing. I think getting the OSCP alone, honestly, will guarantee you a pen testing job. As soon as I put my OSCP on my uh, LinkedIn, I get like nonstop job offers and I don't even have to like apply to jobs now. Like people will hit me up asking if I'm like available to work and I'll tell them no and it just keeps happening. But uh, yeah, I, I think the either of those two options, depending on your situation, is really great. So since we've kind of mentioned certifications and degrees, do you think it's required for someone to have certifications or degrees to get a job in cybersecurity or pen testing? So if you have no experience, it definitely helps like a lot, um, but it's not a hundred percent necessary. I think people can go above and beyond and build their resume with cell phone project or like at home projects, like try hack me and hack the box and, and uh, maybe you know, make a GitHub with some tools and some information. And then I even have a website that people can go to for my OSCP notebook. Um, like it has all my OSCP notes and all that. So I put that on my resume as well. And uh, it just makes you look like you go above and beyond. And uh, so you can supplement the degree and certificates if you don't have education with that. Um, but I will def like, in my opinion, I think it'll definitely hold you back, especially not having a degree um, like just the people I know that don't have degrees and the like experiences they've gone through, it just seems like it's a little bit harder for them. And, uh, so I would recommend that you to go get a degree if possible, if it like fits into your, if you can fit into your life somehow. And, uh, like I said, WGU, I think you even went to WGU, like online school, there's like one paper test per class. There's no like busy work. It's amazing school. You can like if you go and study really, really hard every single day, like I think I was studying like 60 hours a week, uh, like you can finish the school in, in just a few months and get your degree with a whole bunch of certificates. And uh, it's it's really worth it if you have the time. So since we're on the subject, how long did it take you to get your degrees? Yeah, so I got uh, both degrees from WGU. So my first bachelor's degree, so WGU does uh, terms or semesters in six month increments, just so everyone knows. And uh, if you finish your degree early, you still have to wait till the end of the six months before you can start your next degree. So what happened was I started my degree, my bachelor's degree, and I finished in 10 weeks. And then I had to wait the remainder three and a half months for that semester to end. And then once my master's degree started, I actually finished that degree in about eight weeks. So I got, if like, if we count just the study time and that, it was like 18 weeks of 60 hours a day, 
I mean, not a day, 60 hours a week minimum, like mostly even like 80 or maybe even a hundred and, uh, and like four months of waiting is kind of how it breaks down. So like eight months total, but like four ish months of was me actually studying and the other four was me just waiting for the semester to begin. That's great. When even you look at the terms that, you know, you had this six month terms, even if you look at it that way, look at a year, that's pretty amazing to, to get a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in that shorter period of time. Yeah, I'm definitely very like blessed that my uh, brother-in-law told me about the school because I didn't even know schools like this existed. Like I thought I had to go for four years to get a, to get a degree. And, and uh, yeah, it really blew my mind. I actually didn't even believe him when he told me. But once he was like, I promise, like I promise I'm not joking. Like I called this school like 15 minutes later that he told me and I was already like getting enrolled. So um, like since I heard about it, I was like very serious and just wanted to get it out of the way as fast as possible to start my career. Very cool. So uh, what do you think, what are your views on coding? Do you need to know how to code to get into cybersecurity or be a pen tester? Yeah, people ask, actually ask me that all the time. Um, I don't think you need to know coding like whatsoever. I think it definitely helps, but like 90% of cybersecurity jobs that I've like interacted with and heard of, like don't even involve coding like at all. So uh, coding can definitely help you. Like if you know how to code, you can for sure automate tasks, make things easier, um, you're going to be able to read code and troubleshoot things if, if that ever comes your way. But if your job isn't directly like coding or like pen testing or reverse engineering or something like that, then like a lot of cybersecurity jobs, in my opinion, no, you'll never need to know how to code or even think about code or any of that. You always like to hear people's opinions on the topic because uh, Alyssa Knight, doesn't know how to code, but she's an amazing hacker and, and pen tester. And then you see other people that, that are and really believe you need to know how to code. It's just interesting to hear the different opinions. And it's just the same thing with education, certs or no certs, degree or no degree, to just let people see that there's different ways of doing it. So if someone, if going to college just does not sound like it's something for you, uh, anyone out there listening, that you just really don't think you do that. You went to, you, maybe you tried college, you didn't like it or whatever. There's other ways. So it's always good to, to see that. And always interesting to me to see how others got into it and their point of view uh, on, on the subject. Yeah, for sure. It's always good to like hear others' perspectives and yeah, there's like a million different ways to get into cybersecurity. There's no one set path for everyone. And uh, yeah, so like people make new pathways every single day and how they got into cybersecurity. And it's really cool to see. Yeah, and that's one of the one of the reasons that I like to do this podcast is because everyone has a different story. And so, you know, if we do if I do one podcast that only helps one person, that's good. But there's these other each podcast helps different people. They'll see someone's background that they came from and maybe it'll encourage them. Uh they'll see certain things. It just helps, encourages, and inspires them. So it's good to have have the different stories. Uh so while I'm thinking about it, that way we make sure we cover it. So why don't you tell us about your Discord community? Yeah, so the Discord community actually stemmed from my TikTok. I started posting cybersecurity TikToks and sharing my story of how I got into cybersecurity. And um, I, yeah, I started about six months ago and uh, I recently just like hit 90,000 almost followers. So I'm really excited about that. And people just kept asking me in my comments like, hey, like we would really like to be able to interact with each other more and learn from each other. And like there was a whole bunch of people like creating study groups in my comments. And I just was like, wow, people are truly like super interested in this. So I created a community. I started bringing people in there and uh, everything's free, by the way. There's like I never charge for any of my education. I love to like teach for free. It's just like one of my passions. And um, anyway, there, it has the method of exactly how I got into cybersecurity. It tells people what degree I got, how you can graduate in less than six months. It tells people how to transfer um, as many credits as you can from their partner website, Sophia, to be able to like start your degree with already like 30% of your degree complete. Um, it tells people like how I found my job. I post my resume template that I like my actual resume template that I use. And uh, I just really try to help as many people 
as uh, humanly possible. And then I'll like, I'll be in the discord chat like all day while I'm actually working, not in meetings and just like answering questions and talking to people and helping them. And uh, yeah, it's, I really, it's been a great time so far. And like the community is really awesome. I do giveaways and stuff and like everyone's so supportive and like there's a whole bunch of people that have already gotten jobs in there and a bunch of certificates and it's just really great to see. And uh, I hope to continue seeing it thrive and, and grow in the future. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll be sharing the discord server in the show notes so people can find you as well as social media links and all that. So uh, do you have any other recommendations that you would give someone that's trying to get into cybersecurity? Yeah, any so- other tips that, you, that are helpful? Yeah, I, I actually do. Um, so there's like one question all the time that I get from people and there's in the last, do you think I'm able to do cybersecurity? Like, do you think I like, or people will tell me I'm not smart enough for cybersecurity or I would do it. And like my biggest tip is just like everyone's smart enough to do cybersecurity. Every, everyone's born knowing nothing. And I promise you, no one's naturally good at pen testing or like, at least in my opinion, there's no one that can just like be an expert at pen testing just really easily without study or practice. So if you feel like you don't understand something like that's so normal, like the first couple months that I was learning and doing like watching these videos and learning CompTIA A plus, network plus security plus half the time, I didn't even know like what was being told me. I just kept continuing to study and learn and eventually it all clicked in my head. So like it took a while, but don't be discouraged if it's not clicking for you immediately. Um, like just keep pursuing it. Keep watching different YouTube videos of, of different cybersecurity topics. Get people's different perspectives on it, like different learning styles. Uh, a big thing is learning how to teach yourself in cybersecurity. So learning how you learn and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, basically just don't give up. Don't ever tell yourself you can't do something because like I promise you that it's completely possible and all you have to do is like keep pushing. And then eventually the topic you're confused about will suddenly become clear and you'll be a master of it one day and you'll be teaching other people about it. And uh, that's just how it works. And uh, yeah, that's just like the biggest thing that I see a lot of people will just hold themselves back by telling themselves they're not smart enough. But in reality, like you are smart enough. You, you for sure can do it. You don't need to be a math whiz or a programming whiz. You don't need to be any of that. And uh, yeah, so I just encourage people to, get in the field. It's really amazing. You can work remotely and like spend more time with your family and it's really awesome. So that's, that's my major like tip I'd give people is if you really want to get in the field, do not hold yourself back. So what else did you do to, to learn how to pen test? Cause I know you went through the OSCP where there's some other resources that you use to learn pen testing. Yeah. So I was a big uh, player on try hack me. I pretty much did that. Like every day, all day. Um, I'm in like the top 1% of try hack me, maybe even like the top 0.1%. Like it's such a great platform. I know a lot of people recommend hack the box, but for me, try hack me was where it's at. I learned like every single thing I needed to learn, uh, like foundational knowledge to be able to start studying the OSCP and like really obtain the knowledge and like understand it. Uh, so on top of try hack me, um, and then the OSCP labs, uh, there was a couple like YouTube series and all that stuff, which I actually have on my online notebook that's related to the OSCP. So if anyone ever wants to, they can literally like use or they can literally see like the exact uh, materials and playlists that I watched like in order and like the certificates I got prior to the OSCP on, in order and all of that stuff. And uh, so if anyone's interested in that, they can definitely go use that. And it, it might be a little outdated because they, uh, changed the OSCP and added the Active Directory stuff, but a majority of it is still very helpful. So how long ago did you get your OSCP? Yeah, so I got my OSCP, I guess it's been like 12 months now. I got it in December of last year. Oh, good. Nice Christmas present to yourself. Yeah, I was. <laughs> it was very stressful, but uh, I was so happy once I turned, like once I turned my report in, like I kind of knew that I passed because I for sure like made sure my report was perfect and um, like I made sure I got all the flags. And so it was really, really relieving after like my hands trembling for like the past two days for me when I finally like turned it in. It was an awesome, awesome feeling. 
Very cool. So we're getting down towards the end of the show. Are there any other things that you'd like to share? Any advice or tips that you'd like to share with the audience? Uh, let me think. Maybe uh, the one of the things that helped me succeed a lot um, when I was learning is honestly finding a mentor or someone that can really just be there and answer your questions whenever you're not understanding something. That doesn't mean like bother your mentor with like every question, like definitely try to Google stuff, but it's like super helpful to have a mentor that already has the know-how and the experience and already has been in the field um, to guide you. Cause I had that and it helped me so much, like tremendously. And uh, also another thing, try to find like, you know, you can join a discord server or find an, a real life friend, but try to find someone that is interested in changing their life through cybersecurity as much as you and they have an invested interest and find like an accountability slash study buddy to like maybe once a day even, or, you know, a couple times a week, I'll get together and y'all talk about cybersecurity topics that y'all are both learning because talking to someone and teaching them the topic reinforces it in your brain and makes you understand it 10 times more, especially if you have like good criticism. So when you're explaining a topic to someone and they have questions, don't, you know, that's good that they have questions and they question your explanation of it. And that way you can think about it deeper and maybe figure out like, you know, maybe you don't know all of it and they can help you go learn more. So I think in the combination of having a mentor and then someone to help you or someone to study with you or keep you accountable will, will go a very long way into breaking into cybersecurity quickly. So are there any, what's your next certification or next thing you're learning on learning? Yep. Working on learning wise. Yeah. So this, uh, Actually, this month, I'm going to be taking the CISSP, uh, but I don't have five years of experience, so it'll just be the associates of CISSP until I reach the five-year mark. And then in 2023, I'll be getting the OSWE uh, from OFSEC because I really love pen testing web apps. That's like, that's just the favorite or my favorite thing to test. So uh, I'll be going after that certificate. And then after that, who knows, it'll probably be another OFSEC cer certificate. Um, but we'll see. Cool. Sounds like a good plan. Thanks for taking time to, to join the show. It was interesting to hear your story and your advice. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's an honor. And, uh, I've been a fan of you for a while now, so it's like really amazing to be on here and, uh, you're like directly impacting lives. So keep doing what you're doing. Well, thanks. And, and you the same, it's really great what you're doing to already have over 3000 people in your community and, and that's great. You know, a lot of people don't really get into helping people until they've been into their career for a while. And I think that's a good shift that we're seeing more people earlier on in their career helping others. And I think that's that's a great thing. So keep it up. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And we'll see you on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Hacker Factory podcast with Philip Wiley. If you learned something new and this podcast made you think, then share ITSPmagazine.com with your friends, family, and colleagues. If you represent a company and wish to associate your brand with our conversations, sponsor one or more of our podcast channels. We hope you will come back for more stories and follow us on our journey. You can always find us at the intersection of technology, cybersecurity, and society.